Welcome to the Red Delta Project Podcast, where we teach you how to maximize results with minimalist approaches to diet and exercise. My name is Matt Schifferle, founder of the Red Delta Project, author of the books Fitness Independence and Smart Bodyweight Training. So it's been a few weeks now that I've been releasing content on the YouTube channel and of course here on the podcast about my new grind style calisthenics methods. And there's a lot of very positive feedback I've been getting with the particular approach. Things are still getting dialed in, still figuring out some of the details, but you guys are loving it. And I don't blame you because I'm loving it. My workouts have been fantastic ever since applying the GSC formula. And it's crazy how effective this is. It doesn't seem like much on paper, but for example, the other day I did my pull-up workout and I felt it in my lats the next day. I can't remember the last time I felt it in my lats, like almost ever. And right now my abs are sore from my GSC approach to core training, which I have the video up on the, the RDP channel I just posted it the, the other day. It's been three days, my abs are still sore. So we're definitely onto something here and I'm still getting some of the details dialed in but we're off and running to the races. And by the way, for some of you asking, yes, I am writing the GSC book and the, the program, and I'm already like three quarters of the way through the rough draft. So my goal is to have this thing out by the 4th of July, all things willing. Now, in addition to all the positive feedback, I'm also getting a lot of questions regarding grind style calisthenics, calisthenics in general, building muscle with calisthenics, and I wanted to address them here in today's video instead of just little blurbs on the comments section of the YouTube channel. So question number one, one of the most common ones I get is how long do you rest in between sets during the grind phase? The grind phase, of course, is typically three hard sets of traditional strength trains, the meat and potatoes of the program and use backfilling strategy to progress over time. And for this, like any answer in health and fitness, it depends. It depends on many different variables, it depends on what exercises you're doing, your training history, your endurance, your recovery, your neurological state, your metabolic state, your physiological state, your mental state, what time of day you're working out. I mean, there's tons of things that make you make it necessary to need to rest longer or rest shorter. So with that said, here are the general ideas that you want to adhere to. For the most part, most folks are best off with two to three minute rest periods in between sets in the grind phase. And the reason for this amount of time is you want to give yourself enough time to recover enough so that each time you hit that set, you're ready to go and you can pour a ton of energy into every single set. If you rest too short and you're coming to set two or three and you're feeling still tired and you're shaky and your muscles are kind of shot, you're not going to get much volume in that set. Your numbers naturally drop a little bit with subsequent sets, but they drop a lot if you don't rest enough. On the other hand, if you rest too long, then neurologically and metabolically, you can start to kind of cool down and that compromises your ability to put a lot into those sets as well. So in general, two to three minutes is a good place to start, but listen to your body. There was a great uh, article on the mass from Stronger by Science. That's their paid newsletter, highly recommend it. They also have a brand new podcast, which I also highly recommend. And in that article, they were talking about how in a study, there was more uh, success from people who kind of just intuitively rested versus those who stuck to a very strict, you rest 90 seconds every single time, no matter what. You're not a robot, you're a human being. So every time you're working out, there's variables that are undoubtedly shifting around. You may be more tired, you may be less tired, you may have caffeine in your system, you may have forgotten your pre-workout, whatever the case may be. So get uh, enough rest to pour as much as you can into each set, but not so much that you're cooling down. The most important thing I would say is don't get distracted. Don't whip out the smartphone and go through Facebook for the umpteenth time. Stay focused in your workout and do things like light stretching or walk from one end of the gym to the other, which is something that I often do because that keeps you consistent, but it keeps you focused, which is much more important. Other questions that I've been receiving regard the balance between volume and intensity for strength work. Because ultimately in your workout, you only have two variables that you really work with. You have the amount of intensity or the amount of work your muscles are doing and the amount of time you can use that work for. And it's on a seesaw back and forth. And the debate is always raging, especially when it comes to building muscle, which is better. Is it better to do high volume or high time? In which case, your time, your intensity has to be relatively low. Or is it better to flip it and go very high intensity and really work that muscle hard, but the, but the time is relatively low? 
In this debate, you go back and forth and there's research papers and there's empirical evidence and there's people saying one is better than the other and it goes back and forth. But here's the honest truth that you want to look at. We're trying to optimize the formula when we look at these two variables. But ultimately, your results don't come from an optimal formula. You could go high volume, low intensity and get great results. You could go high volume, low intensity and get terrible results. Same if you reverse it. And that's because your results don't come from your workout. They don't come from the formula that you're using. They come from the progression of your functional demand on your muscles, regardless if it's high volume or intensity or vice versa. And that's the thing you want to focus on. If you can say, for example, lift a 10 pound weight 100 times or a 100 pound weight 10 times, if you can do either of those, neither of which is going to make you stronger because you're working within your realm of functional capacity. Your brain is saying, body, I need you to do this. And your body says, yeah, I got that. I can do it. Then there's no impetus or stimulus to change. It's when your brain says, I know you can lift 10 pounds 100 times but I'm gonna ask you to lift 12 pounds 100 times. Ooh, suddenly there's a like, whoa, I can't quite really do that. I better make some changes. Or you could say, I know you can lift 100 pounds 10 times, so now I need you to lift it 11 times. Oh, wow, holy smokes, I can't quite do that. That's the thing that's most important. And it gives you the freedom to work with whatever you like. Some people like high reps, some people like lower reps, some people like heavier weights, some people like lower weight. It really ultimately doesn't matter, especially when it comes to building muscle in the long run, because either formula will build muscle if it's progressive demand. If you're asking your muscles to step up, if you're not asking your muscles to functionally step up over time, it doesn't matter what formula you're using, there's no stimulus to change. That's why, again, in GSC, I usually recommend somewhere around 6 to 15 repetition range for the intensity. That's a nice middle range, and usually in the literature you find that where people have a middle ground tend to do best because both high intensity and high time have a lot of stressors on both mind and body. Stuff that's really high volume can seem tedious and boring, and it's hard to just like, oh, God, I've got 20 more reps. you got to be kidding me. But at the same time, high intensity can be harder to manage your technique and it can be stressful on the nervous system, which is why a lot of people do well in the middle ground with the middle range of time and intensity. Next question is a lot on programming. Matt, how do you program? What do your routines look like? How should I root, uh, build my routines and stuff? Well, in GSC, you know, overall, my entire approach to working out with folks when I train them in person, is I always use the tra chain training method, which states we have six main tension chains throughout the body. You've got your three movement chains, your push, pull, and squat. And then you've got your three body chains, your flexion, extension, and your lateral chain. Now, everybody I ever train basically for strength training goes with this system. And we can use this a million different ways. It's extremely versatile. But the way I always approach it is get at least two to three hard workouts of each muscle chain throughout the week. Now, how we do that, it doesn't really matter, to be honest with you. It could be full body training, it could be split training, it can be push-pull split, it can be upper-lower split, it could be left-right side split. It doesn't really matter because at the end of the day, your results are in the accumulative effect of the total amount of workload over the course of a week, month, and year. So at the end of the week, you're like, yeah, I did 15 sets of hard pull-ups, it doesn't matter if it's split or full body or whatever. It's more important that the workout actually fits you and your resources. Like, what do you have time for? When can you work out? Do you have an easier time working out splits or full body? Those are the, the personal things that can make it work or not. And so a lot of the details about an optimal routine are more just about, well, what can you do? What do you think is best for you? It's not about what your body needs. As long as you get the total amount of work roughly the same. It, how you work out doesn't really matter that much. So the way I usually do it is a couple of ways. Full body, two different ways. So we have a workout that's push-pull squat one day, and then the next workout is full body chains the next. The way I like to do it is kind of a superset back and forth where I bounce between these two. So on Monday, for example, I'll do push chain and flexion chain. And those will be my two exercises that I work. And then the next day it's pull chain and extension chain. And then we have squat chain and lateral chain. And that's a three-way split for me. So it, it's just repeats one more time. So it's six days out of the week. But you can do this any way that you want. 
And that's what I'm saying is flexibility is key. As long as you get the total amount of workload to be optimal about, you know, twice a week or so, and you're making progression in that workload, it's going to work for you. Also getting questions on my grind straps. These I've been using a lot more because, well, quite simply, grind straps make exercises harder. They make push-ups harder and dips harder and pull-ups harder. And that's the whole point because grind style anything is all about how do we make the muscles work as hard as possible, as easily as possible? Because it's actually really difficult to make your muscles work very hard in a safe and controlled way. And grind style is all about making that as easy as possible, which is why I recommend the grind straps. But do you need them? Of course not. You can use grind style with anything. You can use it with rings. You can use it with suspension trainers like the TRX. You can use it with nothing. You can just a pull up bar and do things on the floor. Grind style does not de depend on any particular kind of equipment. Even with that said, a couple of questions I've gotten is can you apply grind style to like weightlifting and working with dumbbells and stuff. And the answer there is, of course you can, because grind style is like everything else at the Red Delta Project, principle-based. It's not uh, equipment-based or even exercise-based. So you can take the grind style approach of the four phases and apply it to any sort of progressive strength training methods, free weights, exercise bands, weight machines, calisthenics. It really doesn't matter what method you're using as long as those phases are being applied in that systematic approach, it's going to work and the actual tools you use is really not that important. Which couples with another question that I get often is how would I combine calisthenics with weight training? And again, we look at the chain training methods and all I simply tell people is, well, you're just using different tools for the exact same thing. So push chain, any sort of exercise that moves your hands away from your torso, dips, push-ups, overhead presses, handstands, bench press, press machine, whatever. It really actually doesn't matter because it's working the push chain that gets results. How you do it and the tools you're using, it's really not that important. It's kind of like if you asked me directions and you're like, all right, how do I get to the Denver airport? And I gave you directions and you're like, okay, that's great if I'm driving a car, but what if I drove a pickup truck? I'd be like, same thing. <laughs> it really doesn't matter. So dumbbells versus barbell versus push-ups and stuff, the movement pattern is the thing that's important. The tools and exercises you use, for the most part, really doesn't matter very much. As long as, in principle, you've got the same basic idea, you're going to get the same basic result. So you're just swapping back tools back and forth. The first time you're working push chain, free weights. Second time you're working push chain, uh, machines. Third time, Calisthenics, you're just swapping out the tools that you're using, but the overall exercise and stimulus is largely the same. Next question is GSC in regards to fat loss. Would you use this for losing weight and stuff? And it's an interesting question, but for the most part, yeah, uh, because anytime you're doing anything to help build muscle and strength, that's a very valuable asset in helping you burn calories and losing body fat. But always remember, there is no such thing as a fat loss exercise. You can't directly tell your body to be leaner through any sort of physical training. And that's because the principle behind changes in body fat levels is caloric expenditure versus caloric intake. So neither exercise nor diet directly control your body fat levels, regardless of what you do. Now, I know it can get really confusing because we hear all the time of this exercise targets body fat and this exercise makes you lose weight and this diet is for flat abs and all these sorts of things. This is nothing more than marketing mumbo jumbo because ultimately, like everything else in fitness that are a big, broad uh, topics like building muscle and losing weight and stuff, there's no one single thing that's responsible for satisfying the principles behind that result. So no, there's nothing exercise wise you can do to directly target weight loss. There's nothing even diet wise you can directly target weight loss. Now you'll hear all the time of people saying, well, I did this exercise or I did this diet and I lost weight. And therefore that caused it. But that's again, a misconception that's very prominent in our fitness culture. I tackle that in the first paragraph almost in my book, Fitness Independence, where again, it's like going to the Denver airport and you drive a black car and you're successful and you're like, hey, that means you need a black car if you wanna to go to the Denver airport. 
It's like, no, the vehicle you used, it really didn't matter that much. It's because you traveled the correct route that you got to there. And that's the same thing with fat loss. Can grind style calisthenics be an influence to helping you burn more calories? Absolutely. Can burning more calories help you expend more calories and therefore tip that caloric balance to help you lose weight? Absolutely. Does it directly cause fat loss? Not a chance in hell. <laughs> it doesn't do anything to directly make you lose weight, but it can be helpful. Any kind of physical activity is going to be helpful, regardless of what you do, regardless of how you do it. Anything that expends energy, I mean, me moving my arms like this as I'm on video, this is a fat loss exercise. So there you go, a lot of the questions I've been getting, I love hearing from you guys. Leave me more questions down below, and also check out the videos on grind style calisthenics, push, pull, uh, abdominal training, leg stuff is coming out this week. Let me know your feedback, it's really appreciated, and it's helping to grow the grind style approach to make it even more effective. I will talk to you guys next week. Till then be fit, live free.